Yeah. Uh, so first, I can start by saying how much I enjoyed Marcus. Um, I thought it was really, really great. What was it about this project that appealed to you and made you want to get involved? Uh, well, a lot of it that was originally approached me by J.R. Poli. You know, I'd shot my mouth off in some interviews about acting and wanted to do some more dramatic stuff and show some chops. And uh, J.R. Poli brought this script to me and showed me a 10 minute clip because it was originally a 10 minute short film that won a bunch of awards. And I saw the performance of, uh, you know, uh, Owen in that, in that, it was just amazing to watch what Owen did. And um, so to have a part in it, and then to read the entire full length script about the struggle that people have with mental health issues. Um, how could I not be a part of it? You know, this is a great role. This is a great dramatic role. It's unlike anything I've ever done. It's not funny. It, it's not imposing. It's got nothing to do with my size or presence. It's just about the relationship between one human being and another. So for me, that part of it was super, super exciting to be a part of. Yeah, like you said, I mean, the film studies like mental health and particularly in men, it's still sort of seen as a taboo subject, something we don't really talk about enough. So how important is it that films like this exist just to open up that dialogue? Well, it is open up the dialogue. And it's funny you say that because um, it is kind of a little bit of a taboo among men. And my character, Gus, that's the thing. He knows there's something going on with Marcus, but he doesn't know how to communicate with him. He doesn't know how to relate to him. He's trying to be supportive, but you know, again, how do we relate to our friends and family that have mental health issues? How do we understand what's going on with it? And that's a good thing that, that uh, J.R. Foley did with the script in this film was to show us an inside look of what people with mental health issues go through. Now, we've seen films where we see the outside actions. We see that we understand that that person's having trouble. But in my experience, this is the first film that I've ever seen that it shows a very clear present example of what's going on inside the, the person's mind and it's easier i think for us to understand okay that's what it's like and then also to to encourage to have those discussions to, to help create hope because a lot of people with mental health issues are they're looking to find that hope somewhere you know and, and, and uh finding that hope that they can latch on to mm. I mean, as you say, Gus kind of struggles to approach the subjects, but I think like many of us, we'd be a bit like Gus. There is that thing of trying to find the way, the like the right route in. Would you say having played this character and been in this project, it's changed your perspective at all? Has it made you maybe more kind of um, open with your friends and stuff about it? Absolutely. I think it's just being a, being a safe place for people with mental health issues, your friends are family, then come and talk to you. Because it's not about you giving them advice. They don't want you to fix it. It's not, hey, get over it. Hey, suck it up, buttercup. It's none of that kind of stuff. It's more of just listening to them and trying to be a place where they can, can open up and vent and, and be empathetic to understand that the struggle that they're having is real. It's not all in their head. It's not, it's not what everybody goes through because, you know, people's mental health issues are, are unique and important to them. And if you're going to be a friend or a family member that's listening, that's what you should do. Listen, you know, be there, be supportive. And even though it's hard to understand, be willing to try to understand what they're going through. Have empathy. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned before how wonderful the performance is by Owen. What was he like to collaborate with on this? Because it is one of those films that lives or dies on that central performance. And he just <laughs> knocks it out of the park on this. On this oh, thing. man, does he kill it. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, like you've seen and been in the presence of, of course, great athletes. You know, you see Michael Jordan or LeBron James. You're like, oh, wow, that's an incredible athlete. You know, great singers when they sing and they give you the goosebumps and you just know that's the next level performer. Actors, you've seen great roles with Denzel Washington and Anthony Hopkins. These kind of roles that you just look and go, wow, that's a great actor. That's the same kind of thing I felt, you know, uh, watching Owen work because he just, uh, the first time I met him was that day when we did the shoot. I met him about 15 minutes before we shot, introduced and then I watched him prepare and transform into Marcus. And it was just such a, uh, a noticeable difference in his presentation, the way he brought the character out, the way he became Marcus, and the way he pulled you into this person that is generally struggling, struggling. You know, you could just, you could feel what he's doing. The authenticity was so real. It's like, wow, that's what a real actor does. <laughs> 
Um, I was interviewing um, Dave Batista a couple of years back, and he was talking to me about his his frustrations sometimes in acting and being offered maybe initially roles and sort of sent scripts for action films to play like henchmen, effectively, basically a victim of his own physique. And people assumed he could only be one thing. Um, is that something you've had to encounter before, being kind of seven foot? Have you have you felt unfairly typecast due to your stature and your history in wrestling as well? I don't think it's unfairly because I think um, it's the norm of what people are used to. You know, they, they would never assume that someone like me or Dave has, would be able to present depth, uh, to be able, be able to present substance other than being someone imposing or like in my case, being someone that's also funny because I'm a big guy, but at the same time, I can be funny. I did with my TV show and stuff like Chris Farley and Kevin James and John Candy, that big guy that's also funny, not afraid to poke fun of himself. But to, to take something and, and with substance or guts to it and be able to uh, perform at a level where the audience forgets your size. And that's the thing that I think um, Dave and I both um, agree on. And we both have personal conversations about that. And even me, he's given me some great advice on, on trying to pick future roles and stuff and not get sucked into that same uh, action movie Kind of stuff. I mean, it works for some people, but um, for me, uh, I'm not. I'm not that leading man, handsome type that's going to come in and save the girl and be the action hero like Harrison Ford or Rock or somebody like that. You know, I'm. You know, for me, it's trying to uh, be something other than my size. I think that's a challenge. And luckily, I don't have to make a living off my acting, so I'm not worried about paying the rent. So I can be a little bit more judicious with. Uh, the roles that I look for and the roles that I take, because I, I turned down a lot of a lot of those stereotypical type roles, which, you know, um, you know, maybe a mistake. You know, some people say, like, you know, should be like Samuel Jackson, you don't turn anything down but the sheets. But, <laughs> you know, but for me at this point, it's it's uh, my whole life has been about my size and my presence. You know, with my acting career, it's more challenging myself and trying to find unique opportunities to do something other than that. Mm. But that's why I thought there was something quite gentle about your character, Gus, in this. Was that something you wanted to, was that on the page? Was that something you wanted to inject into the character in, in a bit that no. helped show that range? No, I think I felt at the time when I was reading the script and realizing that the only real friend that Marcus had in this entire script and only human interaction with someone that could be considered a friend would be Gus. So I think what I tried to strive was to be... Uh, an acquaintance, a coworker, someone that I've spent a lot of time with, of course, I'm going to care about my fellow coworker, but trying to show that in an authentic way without going overboard, like we've got some buddy buddy relationship or we're best friends or something like just showing the human dynamic of, of, of human interaction and human empathy and relationships. And it's a, it was a fine line that um, I thought I did okay with, you know, because you kind of, you can't help but notice how big I am. I get it because of my size. But you kind of forgot for a little bit that I was this, uh, I was the big show or this pro wrestler and that stuff. I, I was Gus. And I think that to me was a, was a super success. Yeah. No, I just saw Gus, <laughs> which is a good oh, man. Is, stop, That's um, what I went for. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> But you're, you're one of many wrestlers to have made that move seamlessly into the kind of world of acting, you know, and you're following in a long line of obviously talented performers. What do you think it is about wrestling as a craft that just allows for that adaptation into cinema to be so triumphant, I suppose, across the years? I think a lot of it is a willingness to, to experiment and to open yourself up to the audience. You know, as any performer, with acting, it's a little hard, especially in film, because you don't have the interaction of live audience. Um, you know, I, I did a film years ago with Wendy Malick and, and like Wendy described it to me that I'm very comfortable, but I would probably be very comfortable doing theater as well because I would have that feel of the audience. And, and I felt that doing my TV show and we had the live comedy show, that audience was a nice, uh, nice security blanket, if you will, because I knew I was getting what I wanted when I was doing it. Uh, film is a little bit, I'd say a little bit, it's a lot harder because you have to trust in the performance of the other actors, trust in your direction, trust in the editing room floor, you know, because I've done some amazing work that's on the editing room floor. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those kind of things. And then you have to wait till the product is done. And then fingers crossed, hope that the audience um, uh, sees, your, sees, your, sees your interpretation and, 
and believes it and accepts it. But it, it's the performing part of it, I think, is in any entertainer, whether, you know, you've seen uh, singers become great actors, you know, anyone that, that has that desire to entertain, even some athletes, some, some pro athletes that have, have felt that desire to, to perform for their fans. They understand, uh, they understand that the fan relationship is important. If you understand that, I think you understand performing. Yeah. Do you think that you mentioned obviously that being in front of those huge crowds, is that quite an addictive, is that quite addictive to have that, you know? Yeah. Of course it is. It's, there's nothing like having, you know, 10,000, 70,000, 100,000, depending on the crowds I've been in front of, to know that every eyeball is on you and you literally are moving your hand like a conductor. I can make him yay, boo, mad, cry. I can, I can influence all those emotions at a will and then tell them a story in the ring because wrestling you know a lot of people that understand wrestling wrestling is a story and it's a it's a competition and it's a drama told through uh, athletic moves but there's a way of doing it where just like a play it'll have a beginning middle and an end and the end in every wrestling match like a movie should move you in some way either make you happy or shock you so a good wrestling match, I tell the younger kids all the time, if the biggest reaction of the night is not the end, then you've done something wrong in your match. <laughs> so you're obviously talking about sort of what it's wanted to try and get, you know, sort of bit, some roles, if that's kind of depth roles, a bit similar to Gus. What, what is that kind of dream role for you? What sort of roles is it you'd like to, you'd like to take? Uh, um, I, I think tackling anything that um, I can disassociate uh, being my size or my character. I don't have to be, oh, that's the wrestler. He's going to kick somebody's ass or, you know, oh, he's going to, he's funny. He's going to take us on a laugh the whole time. Not if there's anything wrong with those. I'm just talking about personally challenging. You want something where you become a real human being where people see beyond your size and your presence. They see, uh, they see the humanity in you. And, and if you can pull off a role, the right role with something like that, whether it's a, a father with a sick child or, you know, something dramatic. I know that's a little cliche, but something that that people will forget for that moment in time that, you know, that I'm I'm this big pro wrestler. You know, anything like that would be great to take on and challenge. Any kind of a, you know, I'm not, I don't think I'm, I would jump into characters with accents or anything like that. I think that would be bad, but um, diving into emotion and empathy and depth and making the audience care about the character in a way that's, not me being funny or not me being imposing, I think would be a wonderful, wonderful journey. Yeah, so you're not too good at accents. How's your English accent? <laughs> it's not very good, because it sounds like I'm from somewhere I shouldn't be, you know? Like a, <laughs> no, you know, a bloke, bollocks, uh, nutter, uh, nets trough. Yeah, like I got a lot of English friends, but I, I try to do it for them and I end up sounding like Madonna and it sounds horrible, <laughs> so I don't do it. Uh, you mentioned obviously speaking to to Dave uh, Batista. You guys obviously still tend, uh, stay in touch. Is that still the case with a lot of the kind of old gang from back in the day? You know, the Rock, <coughs> Triple H. Are there ever kind of reunions, or is there like an old WWE WhatsApp group or something? And do you do you get the chance to hang out at all? I don't really get the chance to hang out, but it's one of those kind of things. For years, you know, those all, those of us from the Attitude Era, we spent five days a week, two hundred and seventy days a year together. You know what I mean? And you spend that much time traveling and going to the same gym, eating the same restaurant, staying in the same hotel, riding the same bus to work on international tours. So you, you know each other's personality and you've spent a lot of time together. So there's always going to be uh, a familiarity that's always nice when you're around each other. You know, I mean, we might have been very competitive uh, back in the day when we were wrestling each other. There might have been a lot of competition. They're trying to one up each other and vie for championships or vie for positioning on a card. But uh, I think now it's one of those kind of things that we have all experienced some pretty amazing times in wrestling and it's unique and we're all just happy to see each other. Mm. Of course, I know you are making a return to the ring soon in the AEW, but not as Big Show, but as Captain Insano. Is that right? The character from yeah. when, when can <laughs> fans expect to see that happen? That's pretty cool. Uh, pretty soon, pretty soon. Uh, um, Tony and I went through the legal hoops to get Captain Insano and we're working on the costume design, uh, all that's being done. It's just a matter, at this stage of the game, it's just a matter of introducing the character and the right storyline with the right talent. Because the one thing that I've been very concerned about AEW is I never wanted to come in and, by the way, take go for a championship and be in the main event. 
I've had that time. I've done that. You know, my thing is really in a humble way is about building the AEW talent, finding uh, talent that I can help benefit by working with and enhancing them and making them better and uh, having some fun. So, and talking to Tony about that, he says, how about we do Captain Sana? I'm like, Dad, how are you going to do that? I'm just, well, we'll try to get the rights to it. I'm like, dude, you get the rights to Captain Insano. I'll do it. And he did it. So there you go. We're going to have some fun with it. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. So my, my very final question is almost, almost out of time, but just wondering if we, will we see the big show return one day to the ring? Have you got kind of ideas of if that might happen? I mean, the big show character? Like yeah, yeah, big show like, character. Like the WWE? Yeah. No, um, no, I don't. Yeah. I, well, I don't own the intellectual property, the big show. So that's owned by WWE. So that, that's, uh, that role belongs to them, so to speak. I'm like an actor playing Captain America. So they own the intellectual property to it. So, so there could um, be another, always, some, someone else could feasibly play the big show. <laughs> feasibly, the way it's written legally is, is someone else could be big show. Right, so, okay. Uh, okay. Um, I hope they have success with it if they do. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, in this, you never say never, but I can honestly say that I'm very, very happy where I am. Uh, I like the way AEW is building and growing. I like being a part of that. And uh, I'm very appreciative to everything I did in WWE. I'm very appreciative of everything that Vince did for me and, and uh, Kevin Dunn and everybody at WWE. But I think for me at this stage of the game, uh, the best thing was for me to personally was just to, to move on and create something new. And that's what I like about AEW because it's just a, a hunger and an authenticity to grow and this little company to grow and become a worldwide media powerhouse like WWE. It'll take time, but it has all the potential to do it. So I like being a part of it. Yeah. Well, with Captain, with Captain Insano in there, that's only going to help. <laughs> it might help a little bit. It might yeah. help a little bit. If not, it'll be, it'll be fun segments, that's for sure. Brilliant. Well, Paul, thank you so much for speaking to me today. And I thought, like I said, I thought Marcus was great. And I thought your performance was great. So hopefully there'll be plenty more, plenty more like this to come, I hope. All right, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it, man. Thank Just you. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. See you. Right, you too. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.